Greetings and welcome to this introductory module on bio-risk management. Bio-risk management encompasses both biosafety management and biosecurity management. In this introductory module, I will be introducing you to the fundamental differences between biosafety management and biosecurity management. I will also introduce you to some of the key terminologies used in the following lectures. Biosafety management pertains to the unintentional release of a biological agent. Unintentional release can be in the form of a breach of containment from a laboratory facility. This release is not intended. However, it has consequences and can pose a significant threat to public health and safety. Biosecurity management, on the other hand, focuses on the intended release of a biological agent. This concerns bioterrorism. A person with a malicious intent can steal a biological agent from a laboratory and use it to inflict a significant harm on public health and safety. This is what differentiates biosafety and biosecurity. It is purely the intent of the end user. We now move on to another key concept which is containment. Containment basically defines the limits of operation of a biological safety facility. In biological agents such as a virus or a bacteria must be contained within a facility in order to prevent its escape and the consequent harm to public health and safety. There are two basic kinds of containment. These are primary containment and secondary containment. Primary containment pertains to the protection of the laboratory personnel from the biological agent by the application of pertinent controls. Secondary containment, on the other hand, pertains to the protection of the environment associated with a particular facility from the biological agent by the application of pertinent controls. Both primary and secondary containment must be applied concurrently in order to manage a biological agent effectively. What exactly are biological agents? Biological agents such as bacteria, viruses, fungi, prions, and other subviral particles, which pose a significant threat to public health and safety, are classified as biological agents. These biological agents are further defined into risk groups. There are four risk groups as defined by the World Health Organization. In order to assess the risk posed by a biological agent, a thorough biological management system involves the application of a risk management protocol. We always commence biological safety management with a risk assessment. Following a risk assessment, we put into place the appropriate controls to mitigate or reduce the risk posed by a biological agent. And finally, we assess the performance of the controls by auditing our performance. These three steps form the basis for bio-risk management. So we commence with risk assessment, then we move on to risk mitigation, and finally we end with performance assessment. And this is a cyclical process which is continuously improved in order to mitigate risks pose when working with biological agents. Let us look at risk mitigation, risk assessment, and performance assessment in separate topics. Risk assessment basically implies the usage of a risk matrix to identify the risk posed by working with a specific biological agent. Risk is measured in terms of likelihood and consequence. For instance, a laboratory may host a biological agent in a refrigerator. It does not pose any risk when it sits inside the refrigerator. However, when a laboratory technician 
begins to process this sample using different laboratory processes such as DNA extraction, protein extraction, PCR, or ELISA, the risk level increases. Risk is always measured in terms of the likelihood and consequence. We measure the likelihood in terms of the likelihood of the breach of containment. And we measure the consequence in terms of the impact on the laboratory user and the environment. When we have assessed the risk posed by a biological agent and the associated operations thoroughly, we move on to the next step, which is risk mitigation. Risk mitigation relies on the application of the five basic controls. We have five controls. These are elimination, substitution, engineering controls, administrative controls, and personal protective equipment. Controls are used in conjunction with each other in order to mitigate the risk posed by a biological agent. Elimination is basically the process of not performing any operation with a biological agent because the risk posed by that particular agent is too high or if you do not have an appropriate facility. Substitution basically focuses on weakening the pathogen. For instance, viruses can be attenuated or weakened so as to make them more manageable in a laboratory setting without posing a significant risk to the laboratory operators and to the environment. Engineering controls are specific facilities which are designed to contain a biological agent and offer a safe working environment to the laboratory users. Administrative controls pertain to the standard operating procedures and other training which is provided to a laboratory user in order to ensure a safe and conducive working environment and in order to ensure the containment of that particular biological agent. And you have the final level of mitigation, which is the personal protective equipment. I am currently wearing a biosafety suit, which offers me protection against the biological agent. This will basically prevent my skin from contact with a biological agent. However, if the biological agent is transmitted via aerosols, there is a risk of inhalation. In this case, I have to use additional personal protective equipment such as masks or eyewear in order to prevent inhalation of that particular biological agent. Most of the respiratory viruses are transmitted via inhalation. In this case, one needs to use a proper risk mitigation measure such as a mask or a powered air purified respirator to prevent risk of exposure to that biological agent. Some biological agents may also be transmitted via the ocular route through the eyes, in which case one needs to use proper eyewear in order to protect oneself from this particular biological agents. So these are the five basic controls, elimination, substitution, engineering controls, administrative controls, and personal protective equipment. Once we have finished our risk mitigation, we look at the residual risk or the risk after application of all these controls. The laboratory users and the laboratory management must then decide whether this risk, which is termed as residual risk, is sufficiently addressed in order to work in that particular facility. Please take note that residual risk may vary from facility to facility. And you will have to refer to your own unique situations in order to address this residual risk. We now move on to the third step in bio-risk management, which is performance assessment. Performance assessment basically involves auditing or looking back at your records to determine whether there was any breach of containment. If you did observe any breach of containment in the form of an accident or an incident, you must go back and look at your standard operating procedures and modify them accordingly. Please take note that documentation is critical to every biosafety operation. 
one needs to maintain appropriate documentation and all documentation must be controlled and traced in order to identify potential breaches of containment at a biosafety facility. So that basically covers the key aspects of biorisk management. We have risk assessment, risk mitigation by the application of the five controls, and performance assessment. I hope this introductory video has clarified some of the terminologies associated with biorisk management. I will discuss these further in my forthcoming lecture notes. We will focus on specific risk groups and the manner in which they can be mitigated in the following lectures. Thank you very much for watching this introductory video. Please stay biosafe and thank you.